Scripture reading is Revelation chapter 20, verses 6 through 10. Blessed are and, and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with Him for a thousand years. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Michael, to gather them together for the word. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore, and they come up uh, on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the full prophet are also, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Amen. Iman of Kair and Nisi Ukisra will glorify God with their praise. We will watch the senior pastor's video sermon entitled Lectures on Revelation 69. Loving brothers and sisters in Christ, members of branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all other members who are attending this service through the internet and GCM viewers. After the misery of the 70th Great Tribulation, the Millennium Kingdom where the Lord reigns is unfolded. Brothers and sisters, aren't you curious about how the saved children of God, the people of spirit, live as kings in the Millennium Kingdom, but the people of flesh eat in how they live? Aren't you curious? Please listen carefully to today's message. It is the period without tears, sorrows, diseases, disasters, and death. There is only peace and happiness. For how long? For a millennium. Those saved souls enjoy the glory with our Lord the King and live on earth along with the people of the flesh. I explained to you about the life in the Millennium Kingdom in the last lecture. Since many of you want to know more of, of the Millennium Kingdom, however, I'll give you more details about the Millennium Kingdom. Let's take a look into the city where the people of the Spirit live. I told you previously that God's children assumed the resurrected body and that they are the people of the Spirit who live in the cities so They are separated from the people of the flesh. There is a central city and other cities which are like branch cities are on each continent. In the central city, there are many rooms. According to the rank and order, there are rooms for the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the prophets, and the saints. The location and size of the rooms are set according to the rank of the owner. The location and size of a room reveals the rank in heaven, but the room is not as big as the house in heaven. The rooms in the city are not former official rewards given to the saints. They are temporary places to stay in uh, during the Millennium Kingdom. Only a minimum amount of space is given. For example, it is like a wealthy man who owns a huge mansion staying in a hotel when he goes on a business trip or while traveling. It's impossible to carry his huge mansion, isn't it? Furthermore, the people of spirit don't need a restroom, a bathroom, or a rental room. All they need is an individual place for their own. In addition, even if the room is not as big as the house in heaven, the size of the room doesn't matter to the people of the spirit who are in the resurrected body. The concept of space is different from when they were in the flesh body, and thus they don't feel closed in or confined. Even though there are countless saints who have been saved since the creation, because they occupy only a minimum space, they can all fit in the city. 
Besides the individual rooms, in the center of the city are a conference room, executive offices, and courtrooms. A courtroom is necessary when the people of the spirit make a judgment for complicated matters that come to exist among the people of the flesh. There are no conflicts or lawsuits out of evil. However, it is necessary to set certain rules for mature conformity and control when various people gather to live together. Besides all these, there are many facilities that can be enjoyed in the spiritual space. In the beginning of the Millennium Kingdom, the people of spirit can freely walk and travel outside the city. Hopefully, you will do a lot of sightseeing in that period along with me. You can go wherever you wanted to go, but Couldn't. However, as time goes by and the number of the people of the flesh increases, their activity outside the city gradually becomes more restricted. They don't walk as freely as they did in the beginning. With the exception of certain unavoidable situations, they later stay inside the city. That's why the city is equipped with many facilities that they can, they can use to enjoy, see, and learn the things of the Spirit. They hold feasts among the people of spirit, and they look back on the seven-year wedding banquet. They also learn the knowledge of the spiritual one. No matter what they do, they enjoy the thousand years without getting bored. They don't feel the thousand years as being a long time. They will have blissful moments during the time. I also mentioned that in addition to the central continent city, there are branch-like cities on each continent. Among the people of the spirit, some in certain leadership positions are sent to each city along with the other people of the spirit who will help the leaders. There are, uh, they, uh, there are lead, uh, the leaders are people who were in the fourth level of faith, and there are others who were in the third, second, and first levels of faith. They are given their own duties. Inside this, um, you can understand it easily when you think of the castles of the Middle Ages. Inside the castle, there is a lord of the castle, and normal people live outside the city, uh, outside the castle. Inside the castle are the people who belong to the lord of the castle. They are uh, the family of the lord. There are also stewards, maids, subordinates, and others who serve. Likewise, there is a man who, uh, man of the spirit, who is in charge of each city. There are uh, some people who have higher spiritual ranks, some of middle ranks, and others of lower ranks. And they live together, taking care of their own duties. I explained that the people of the spirit reign for a thousand years It means they are as noble as kings when compared to the people of the flesh. However, there truly exist ranks and orders among the people of the spirit according to the extent that they had accomplished the spirit. And different ranks decide different duties. Of course, their duty is not a trifling job or a chore. That's because the city is a spiritual space surrounded by the light, unlike outside the city. There is no dirt, and there is no out of order trouble. Now, as the number of the people of the flesh increases, the jobs that the people of the Spirit should do also increase because they have to teach them and manage them. In the beginning of the Millennium Kingdom, there aren't many people of the flesh, and thus the people of the Spirit have time to spare. They can enjoy traveling to many places with the Lord. Of course, as I explained in the last lecture, the Earth doesn't have the same civilization or natural environment that existed just before the seven-year Great Tribulation. There are ruins left from the destruction of wars and disasters, but other things that existed disappeared without any trace at all. But the Lord restores at its word. He restores the natural environment that God the Father created. He removes the pollutants and contaminants so that it is somewhat similar to Earth at the time of Adam, only better. However, the remains of a civilization and the buildings and infrastructures are not restored. What has been destroyed remains destroyed, and no traces are left or other things. 
However, when you visit such a place that once they existed, angels were set up on the screen, and you can see its original structure through images on the screen. For example, when you go to the site of the pyramids, you can watch how they were constructed and what they originally looked like. Or, as we go on a pilgrimage trip, the Lord may guide you to the very place He conducted His ministry. The paths of the Lord Jesus have vestiges of light, even though long years have passed. Through the screen, you can watch the buildings of those things and the exact situation at the time. You can watch and learn about not only the history and the civilization of mankind, but also God's providence of the creation of the earth. This is one of the reasons God has planned for the millennium to let us know the earth where we were born and cultivated. Our home is heaven, but the earth where we were cultivated can be considered as our second home. It is God's grace so that we don't miss or have any concern remaining about the second home. Actually, there is a more important reason for this, but I'll tell you about it later. You may wonder why we don't go straight to heaven after the judgment. Why we come back down to the earth and live for a millennium after the seven-year wedding banquet? Well, when you're happy, even 1,000 years feels like a moment. Because you live eternally in heaven, you live 1,000 years on the earth so that you won't have a lingering attachment about the earth. Traveling around always, you'll be content as you think. Born and raised in Korea, I wanted to make sure to visit Switzerland, but now I've been there. I wanted to look at wildlife in Africa, and now I've seen lions and everything. I told you that not all people of the Spirit would learn directly from the Lord when traveling and sightseeing around the earth. Those high-ranked people of the Spirit may hear and learn directly from the Lord, but not all the city of the saints can do so, because they are numerous in number. They learn from those who hear and learn directly from the Lord. In this way, the Millennium Kingdom and heaven operate in very clear and strong order and system. However, as some time passes, it is difficult to travel to many places of the earth. As the population of the people of the flesh rapidly increases, the people of the Spirit stay mainly inside the city. As needed, they go out from the city in a restricted manner to manage the people of the flesh. Now, let's take a look into the life of the people of the flesh. The Millennium Kingdom begins with very few people of the flesh. In the previous lectures, I explained that there was a significant number of Israelites who survived in the fortress that, had, that God had prepared and they entered the Millennium Kingdom. The number is, however, not so big. Even though they fled to the fortress, some of them came out and died, and some others died in warfare with the forces of the Antichrist. Therefore, the number of people who survived is far fewer than those who originally fled to the fortress. The reason I said the number is big is because the number of Israelis is quite large compared to the total population of those who survived the seven year Great Tribulation. In the latter half of the seven year Great Tribulation, during those three and a half years, the people of Israel will win their hearts in repentance. At this point, they come to know exactly that the one he, they killed 2,000 years ago is their king and their Messiah.
Since the total number of people who survive is very small, the number of Israelis is relatively greater than that of others. Of course, there are other survivors who keep from receiving the mark of the beast, and some of them hid themselves deep in the mountains. Even some of those who received the mark also survived. I believe you've heard that some people have prepared food in cheap underground hiding places for the future nuclear war. Among those who received the mark during the 70th Great Tribulation, some prepared this hiding place. Especially in the city of Patra, provisions have been laid out there because uh, prophesies about what is to come have been told by many people. A tour guide informed me years ago that people have uh, uh, hoarded the Bible and stored the provisions inside that fortress. It is to prepare for the seven year Great Tribulation and to hide themselves and survive. Very small number of them hid themselves and survived in such a hiding place while people lived in the horror of slaying one another. Of course, not all of them survived even though they hid themselves deep in the mountains or those hiding places. Only a small number of people, those in a physical condition that is strong and have uh, exceptional vitality for life, will be able to survive. Therefore, the number of the survivors is extremely small compared to what you estimate. On each continent, out of all those who hit the mountains, only a few people survived. Let me omit the exact number because it's such a tiny number that you won't believe it. In addition, among the people who received the mark and hit the underground, only a few survived on each continent. I didn't tell you the exact number. If you add all of them up, just how many will there be left out there? There are just a couple of thousands. You can easily imagine now just how miserable that 70 Great Tribulation will be and how evil those who destroy each other will be. So you find in the Bible that a third of mankind are killed from the start of the 70 Great Tribulation. Such things repeat several times thereafter. By the way, I also explained that such a small number will rapidly increase by using the example from the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. You can easily get an approximate idea through the case of Adam and Eve. Even after the flood of Noah, the population has increased dramatically just through the family of Noah. The population will be growing much faster uh, uh, because uh, there will be no disease and no death in the Millennium Kingdom. Also, when the population is small, they continually convert to a multiply number. The pain of childbirth is not as strong as today. They will not see death and will also have food to it. And so uh, they will continually increase in number. Moreover, by the strength and power of God, they are not even badly injured. Uh, there are four seasons like we have today, and the weather is different in different regions, but there is no extreme heat or cold anywhere. The polar regions are not covered by snow, and there are no deserts. The temperature of those places is just a little bit higher or lower than the most optimum for human beings. For example, in autumn, the wind becomes a little bit cooler, leaves fall, and flowers stop their perils. In this environment, the people of the flesh live happy lives. They build houses, make fire, and develop civilization in their own way. They build houses, make clothes, do farming, and get married. Even though they build houses, since they don't have bricks or concrete, they use lumber or animal skins. They have experience uh, and knowledge about the civilization, but they can live only primitive lives since conditions needed to utilize knowledge don't exist. For instance, when they produce clothing, utensils, or vessels, they 
can't manufacture anything in a factory or use machines to produce the fine products. Even though they have knowledge, they can't actually produce them. Even if their living standards improve, their production doesn't go further than family-oriented handicrafts. Another reason that civilization cannot become like that of the past is because there are no resources they can develop and use. When the Lord restores their environment with His Word, He makes trees and plants of flourish with fertile land and clean water. But it's not that natural, natural resources such as coal, uh, oil, and uranium are restored. Actually, initially traveling by horse, they may be able to make carriages or wagons, but they cannot make a plane or a motor vehicle. A motor vehicle. They can't make them within a thousand years, nor can they generate electricity. Of course, they, can, they become more advanced than the primitive state because they've known science and civilization. Even so, how could they set up a power plant and provide electricity? Could they manufacture airplanes or automobile, automobiles? No. They burn trees to make fire, but it's not possible to make a uh, kerosene stove. But don't picture them living in a primitive state. People assume that mankind discovered how to make fire by rapidly creating stones together after many years. But that is not true. It's just how people assume the primitive civilization developed, but it wasn't so in reality. Having ruled everything in the Garden of Eden in the second heaven, Adam had a considerable amount of knowledge. So how could Adam and those who followed him had not even known how to make fire? They had such advanced technology, so how could they have not even known how to make fire but discovered it many years later? That's not true. It's just what people estimate how the civilization developed. So they would burn trees to make fire, but it's not possible to make kerosene stove. They have this limitation, but the speed of the rise of their civilization is faster than that of the past. Even though they cannot make full use of their knowledge, there is a big difference in having the knowledge of the past civilization and having no knowledge of it at all. In the boundary that God allows, the quality of a living, living develops much faster than in the past. Now, how will people understand each other? As for the people of flesh who survived the seven-year Great Tribulation, English speakers continue to speak English in the Millennium Kingdom, and Korean people continue to speak Korean. People are speaking the same language will gather together, and their descendants will speak their parents' language. Since the number of the survivors is small, they can easily understand that there are not as many languages as today. Even when people of different languages speak, those who know the other language can translate for each other. They may learn foreign languages as well. On the other hand, the people of this spirit speak only one language. Their language is not like English, French, or German. They speak one common spiritual language. Even without learning process, the people of spirit can naturally speak the language with God's power. Did anyone teach you to pray in tongues? If God gives you the gift of tongues, anyone can pray in tongues fluently. Some in French-like, others in Chinese-like, still others in Japanese-like, English-like, and etc. Even without someone teaching you, you can do it all with God's grace. You can do it in different languages as well. 
the people of spirit all speak in one language, but that's not the case with the people of flesh. The people of spirit don't need to struggle to study this new spiritual language. This is the original language that God gave to us, and we can learn it automatically. However, in the event that people of spirit must go out from one of the branch-like cities, they will use the appropriate fleshly language of that vicinity. vicinity. Uh, however, in the, uh, uh, they should communicate with the people of the flesh by using the language that the people of the flesh speak. Actually, even without uh, knowing language, there wouldn't be as much discomfort. They would understand each other by gestures. If we are to say, let's eat to an American without knowing English, you can gesture like this, can't we? If we want to describe boxing, we can do like this so with a, a clenched fist. Even though we don't know the language, we can roughly make each other understand, understood. We can also learn the languages. Therefore, the people of the Spirit who are dispatched to other continents are those who used to speak the language that was spoken in their respective continents. Even for the people of the Spirit, they can't speak all the languages of their respective continents because they haven't learned them. So if English is spoken there, English-speaking people are dispatched to English. For example, in the continent where the people of the flesh speak Korean, those who can speak Korean among the people of the Spirit are dispatched. From time to time, when the people of the Spirit who cannot speak Korean visit the region where people speak Korean, a bilingual Korean speaker will translate. Basically, it is safe to think that there is no communication problem among the people of the Spirit and between the people of the Spirit and the people of the flesh. Dear brothers and sisters, the people of the Spirit who are in their resurrected body don't change in their appearances. They maintain the most active and beautiful appearances of a 33-year-old man or woman. On the other hand, the people of the flesh will grow old, you know, even though they will not die or die of old age. According to the law of the flesh, aging will progress. But unlike today, the aging is not fast but very slow. When a child is born and reaches a certain age, the child will grow up at a rate similar to today. The child will soon walk and jump and grow up becoming an adolescent. However, in 20s, uh, 20s uh, the aging uh, progresses very slowly, and it is the same in 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. In other words, the aging takes place very slowly during the period of the thousand years. The people of the spirit don't get aged, but remain as 33-year-olds. But the people of flesh do age, but in a slow pace. Why? Even if they live, they live for 1,000 years at uh, the longest. It's not longer than 1,000 years. As you find in the book of Genesis, people lived more than 900 years, didn't they? Even though there was death at the time. But in the Millennium Kingdom, there is no death. Even if a child puts his hand into a viper's hand, he won't be beaten. People will live in such an environment where there is no pollution at all. Even if they age, the process is very, very slow. Even towards the end of the millennium, they won't say, I've run out of the energy, I'm about to die. However, as time goes by, the symptoms of aging appear, such as the inability to conceive a child. Therefore, people cannot give birth to children continually for a thousand years. When people reach a certain age, they can no longer conceive a baby. In addition, they cannot bear 30, 40, or 50 children, even if they live a thousand years. Just like in older times, the Koreans may have three, five, or at most ten children. At the beginning of the millennium, they give birth to a relatively larger numbers of children, but as the population grows, they have fewer babies. All these newborn people live in a good environment, but not all of them are equally healthy and wise. 
Since they inherit the energy from their parents, there is a difference in adapting themselves to the environment. Some adapt relatively well to the environment, but others do not adapt as well. Even if there is no disease or death, according to justice, their health, wisdom, and characters are different from each other. Brothers and sisters in Christ, can you understand the life of the Millennium Kingdom more concretely? Even though you won't live as much of people in the Millennium Kingdom, isn't it enjoyable to be aware of this? But the peaceful period of the thousand years is up, and the earth is filled with people, a great incident takes place. Revelation 20, 7 and 8 says, When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison, will be released from the abyss, and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. When the Millennium Kingdom began, God could find a dragon and other evil spirits in the abyss. Now, at the end of the thousand years, God releases the enemy devil and Satan among the people of the flesh once again. After a thousand year long confinement, when Satan comes out, the situation she finds is totally unacceptable. The people of flesh who used to be under her control now live like a lamb, like a lamb and they worship God and the Lord. She finds those who used to worship her worshiping God and the Lord. They also obey and follow the people of the Spirit as if they were their lords. The enemy devil and Satan seize the control of the world again and rapidly manipulate the people of the flesh to be worshipped by them. For a thousand years, the people of the flesh didn't have any evil thoughts and they didn't do anything evil, but it doesn't mean they didn't have evil attributes in them. Their original evil and evil attributes that they used to have in this world still remains, remained. Those who survived in the seven-year Great Tribulation naturally they have evil attributes, especially those who received the mark of the beast that once did terribly evil things. Also, their descendants inherited the evil attributes in their natures. They have come across situations that could provoke their evil because there were no evil spirits around for a thousand years. No matter how evil a person is, if he lives in a peaceful environment where he has no food and no need to fight or covet, and his evil is not provoked, wouldn't it look as if he were good? Some people appear to be gentle, but on the inside, they are filled up with deceit. All their words are completely lie, and they refuse to admit all what others say. Every word they say is a lie. Having seen such people so many times, I warn you not to be deceived by them. There are plenty of people who utter lies, saying, I have seen something myself. Some people are not likely to tell lies. They seemingly tell what is true, but they actually tell lies. You have to be mindful that there are many people of that that kind of around you. Studying history has been quite helpful for me. As I learned the history, I find that even a long time ago, most of those in the high social rank lived a life of deceit, despite of the fact that Korea was called the Eastern land of courtesy and taught its people ethics. They told Shia lies to the king together. They haven't come across situations that could provoke. Um, they haven't. They haven't come across the situations that could provoke their evil because there were no evil spirits around for a thousand years. I once compared the work of Satan with a radio wave. Even though we cannot see them, there are many radio waves in the air. 
until we set the radio's receiver, receiver to a certain radio signal, we can't hear the broadcast. Likewise, even when Satan tries to work within, uh, with evil thoughts, if you don't have evil in your heart, you don't dis you don't receive the work of Satan. Furthermore, even if you tune in to a specific channel, if there is no radio station that sends out its, its signal, you won't be able to hear any sound. In other words, no matter how much evil a man is, if there is no Satan that governs even it, you will not be uh, aroused and he will live like a man of goodness. Those who lived a life of goodness for a thousand years, they are rapidly stained in evil when Satan is released. They have original evil with it, but it has remained dormant uh, during that time. And Satan works upon people and stir up their evil. I say there are plenty of scraps in this cup of water. They will all sink to the bottom in a week or two. This scrapes hidden down. The water above turns into clear water, doesn't it? But what will happen if someone agitates this cup? The water will be mixed up with scrapes, won't it? Without the evil spirits, people's evil attributes all subside and remain dormant in the depths of their heart. As Satan is released and controls people's hearts and thoughts, people that haven't been thrown away came out again. In order for you to receive human cultivation well, you have to root out the original roots of evil. After some fasting, you may feel evil has been thrown away. After some time, however, if you get tempted or some evil stimulating situation comes up, it comes back alive. You get disappointed, like, I thought it's been thrown away, but there it still is. Thus, evils should be removed as their roots. You have to get rid of their roots in the first place. Even if you fall the weeds and grass, if their roots remain, you will, uh, they will grow back soon. Likewise, you, we've got to get rid of the roots of evil. You have to fight against sins like that to the point of shedding blood. Even though the Bible urges us to do it to the point of shedding blood, if you don't even try to do so, but just take the wide path, you shouldn't say, I walk according to 70 a great tribulation. That's not in the faith, is it? Satan doesn't work in the air as she used to be, used to, but she manages the people of the flesh directly in the first heaven. This way, Satan can stay control with evil and control them all the more quickly and more strongly. Even though Satan is released temporally, numerous people are deceived in this period. What kind of deception is it? Why can't we live an abundant life inside the city? Why should we live miserably like this outside the city? Why, sh why should we serve the people of spirit? We also want to be served and enjoy many things as we please. Satan instigates the desire for fame and power so that the people of the flesh will have ill feelings against the people of the spirit. When the enemy devil and Satan is not released, there is none who provoke them to ill feelings or thoughts. While their evil was not aroused, they stayed in stayed calm and obedient, but as the evil spirits are released and stimulate them, changes happen, they turn into different people. This is the case with you. Suppose you live a life of goodness, but someone stimulates you. They tell lies and make up stories as if they knew everything. You listen to them and believe them. Satan particularly deceives those in leading positions so that they can gather together to rebel against the people of the Spirit. We will look into the continuing story in the next lecture. The reason why it uh, releases the enemy devil and Satan after locking them up for a thousand years is to be explained in the next 
intercession. God does it because it is necessary. It's never to drive people onto the way of destruction. It's out of His love. It is to lead true children to heaven, not false ones. No matter how gentle and good you may seem right now, God looks at the innermost part of your heart, doesn't He? If you don't root out evil and untruth from the bottom of your heart, it's no, no use. Heaven is not a place for such people. There should be no forms of evil and untruth. God wants His children to become truly sanctified and re resemble our Lord. Man has lost the image of God, and God wants those who have recovered that lost image. That's why He put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You should live a Christian life as such and walk down the narrow path which God says is the way of salvation. While you befriend this world, commit sins and works of the flesh, indulge in worldly pleasures and walk on the wide path, you can't say, I'm saved. I, if I ingratiate, myself with your adult members. I wouldn't say this, but just be indulgent to say, just go easy with your faith. You can be saved only if you pray, attend services, and offer the tithes. Then I'll be loved by them. Male young adults will love me so much as well. If I just say, it wouldn't hurt to smoke when um, there's no one around you, except when you come to the church. Many of them will, li will like me and won't leave this church. Who would leave this church if I taught them they can go, have, go to heaven with uh, that easygoing life of faith? Suppose I say, haven't you believed in while always showing them wonder signs and God's power and assure them that they can go to heaven? They won't leave this church. However, if uh, they could go to heaven by doing so, I would teach them that. But not even a single verse of the Bible says that we can be saved by such a Christian life. Instead, it only commands us to throw away all forms of evil. Heaven is such a place. For this reason, even if they lived peacefully during the Millennium Kingdom, they can't be brought into heaven. The enemy, enemy devil and Satan have to be released and they need the sorting out through the test because they have been taught by the people of spirit for a millennium if they truly change themselves have true faith love god and have hope in heaven there is no way they will be deceived I will continue to explain about this in the next session. Let me conclude the message, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Revelation 22, 20 says, He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Upon hearing this verse, some of you might say, The Lord it shouldn't come this early. They say, they say it because they are not prepared as a bride yet. However, others say the same with a different meaning. They say that because they want to enjoy many things in the world, like getting married and giving birth to children, this is why they say the world should not come so early. But spiritual ignorance it is. Food that is, food that is so delicious to the people of the flesh doesn't even have any taste to the people of the spirit who are in the resurrected body. Many years ago, when people were poor and hungry, they could enjoy even soup of bitter herbs. But do you think you would enjoy it now? It is the same in the fleshly world. No matter how good and pleasant it is in this world, it cannot be compared with the happiness the children of God will enjoy after the Lord comes back. I believe that all of you are diligently adorning yourselves as brides because you understand this fact. I hope that you will stay diligent uh, through the rest of the year so that, uh, that as the Apostle John did, you, can, you too can boldly confess, Amen, come Lord Jesus. By doing so, many of you uh, not only live as kings in the millennium kingdom, but also receive a higher rank in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Let's pray over the message. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.
Let us receive the prayer for the sick of the senior pastor in therapy. You. Please lay your hands on your sick part or lay your hands on your chest and receive the prayer for uh, with faith. Hallelujah, Almighty God, our loving Father. Please lay your hands on all believers who are receiving this prayer now. Show me your works that transcend time and space on those who are receiving this prayer through GCN and Internet, and branch churches and local sanctuaries, and all other children of God around the world. Give them the faith to believe from heart, to drop away ne negative thoughts and doubts, and drop away all tested trials. From head to toe, all entrails, joints, knees, nerves, tissues, and cells, whatever the sick part may be, burn them in the fire of the Holy Spirit and the original light. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs, and viruses, and infirmities go away, like calm. Please scourge all their terminal and incurable diseases with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Drop away all endemic diseases, including malaria. All contagious diseases, including cold, flu, and fever, go away. Protect them from all kinds of germs and viruses. Heal them of all stomach, lung, liver, breast, mutant, and intestinal cancers, AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high and low blood pressure, diabetes, and problem, and heart, lung, and penis diseases, and all inflammations go away. Heal them wholly of stroke, arthritis, and herniated discs, back pain, headache, neuralgia, and all the pains. Disappear. Epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and other mental diseases go away. All kinds of paralysis will loosen. Get up, walk, and leave. Let the eyes see you well. Let the ears see you well. Let the blind people see the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Heal them of the after effects of all kinds of accidents. Fix their broken bones. Restore them from burns. Let the heat and burning sensation go away. Father, let them be the most God left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions, poisoning, and substance abuse. Let the dead constituents and cells be regenerated and bring the death back to life. Give them the blessings of conception. Receive the blessing of conception. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil to say the rule of the power there, the evil forces of the heavenly places, and their servants go away. Go away, evil unclean force and deceive your spirit, separate spirits, and all forces of darkness. This is the bonds of wickedness. Darkness, glory, light calm. But God, give them strength to cry with prayer and the power to test the sins and become sanctified. As their souls prosper, let all things go well with them and let their families be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters on this week and bless them to lead a prosperous life without any problems. With the fiery words of the Holy Spirit, heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes, protect all your children their families, workplaces, and business fields. Give students wisdom and understanding and give them enthusiasm and forward to study hard. Please keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and let them love God more fervently. Whether your children eat or drink or in whatever they do, let them do it all to live our life glorifying you for our God. Let them be able to testify about the living God, saying, I have met and experienced God and received these answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Be glorified alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. それは命与える救いの